Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Graceology with Gwen Smith podcast. I'm Gwen Smith, and I am so glad you've joined me today. Around here, we have fun, faith-focused, grace-filled conversations, all to help you know and trust God more. Our discussions are honest, often humorous, and always practical, and they're going to encourage you in meaningful ways to live out and lean on the grace of Jesus in the midst of cluttered, messy days. You got any of those? I know I do, and I can't wait to get to today's conversation, which is going to be an encouragement for any woman who has ever felt like she is not good enough. My guest today is Hollywood's favorite god girl, Carrie Pomeroli. Carrie's a comedian, and she's a writer and a speaker who tours nationwide with clean comedy at top Christian and secular venues, and she is so much fun. Y'all are going to love her. Listen, we all know it gets exhausting trying and failing to live up to those Pinterest-looking, airbrush, and Insta-filtered quote-unquote real life and biblical role models. But the good news is, God isn't holding a competition for the perfect woman. Instead, He sees us where we are, and He invites us into a greater story, one that is full of grace. In this episode, Carrie and I have a laughter-filled, heart-to-heart conversation about some things in life that trip us up and the ways Jesus reaches out to pick us up. You're going to love it. What is up, Carrie? I am so stoked to have you on the Graceology podcast today. Welcome. I am sitting outside of my favorite store waiting for it to open, the dollar store, so I can go buy envelopes and plastic bags, which is <laughs> like one of the great thrills of my life besides doing your podcast today. So yes, I'm happy to be here. Hey, we always start off my conversations with my guests by putting you on a hot seat of sorts. We have a fast, fun favorites round to get to know you in a girlfriendy kind of way. So are you ready? Let's do it. Cool. All right. Carrie, are you early morning girl or late night? Both. And that is not working out for me. (laughs) Perfect. Okay. Where did you grow up? Detroit, Michigan with an Alabama Southern mother. So there was a lot of traveling back to Alabama, a lot, a lot, but my heart is in Detroit. Got it. Cool. Okay. Um, Jeans or yoga pants? Neither. Parachute pants from 1984. <laughs> okay. They're looser. They're more of a loose fit. We need to bring them back. You are too legit to quit there, girl. Yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> okay. What is your guilty pleasure? Nutella for sure gets me through some tough days. Okay. Who is your favorite comedian? Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, I love Jim Gaffigan as a nationally known, but here's a little tip. There's a comedian out there named John Heffron, H-E-F-F-R-O-N. He won Last Comic Standing. He slays me, like slays me. He's from Michigan and he does jokes about growing up in the 80s. Like when you were on the swing set and it was so cheap that you would swing and then the poles would come out of the ground because your dad bought cheap one and then (laughs) you uh, made nunchucks out of the wrapping paper rolls because that's all you could afford for toys so i have a huge comedy affection for him he's so funny he's so so funny okay john heffron we're gonna look him up and put him in the show notes yeah he needs jesus but that's okay (laughs) got it got it what is your favorite hymn or worship song definitely anything from kirk franklin to rock out with my kids. Are you a spender or saver? Definitely a saver, hence why I'm at the dollar store. Yeah, I was thinking that was kind of an obvi. Okay, cool. Yeah. And the final question is, what Bible story do you think is funniest? I think Peter walking on the water because, see, I'm a comedian, so my brain doesn't work the way yours does. So my head is there's like a prequel to that story that didn't make the Bible where there was like the 13th disciple. Maybe his name was like Jerome and maybe he's like a little chubby and he tried to <laughs> in the water. And then Jesus was like, Jerome, you ate all the fishes and loaves. I don't have enough faith for that. Said Peter, kind of like a red rover, like said Peter right over. So um, as a comedian, I tend to write Bible stories, prequels in my head. 
I think Jesus was very funny. I think he um, was sarcastic. And, you know, when he turned those tables over in the sanctuary when they were selling stuff, I felt like that was his mic drop moment. He's like, booyah, don't mess with me. You know what I mean? (laughs) Or also, just to add one quick one, when Mary was telling Jesus to change the wine into water, that was definitely a Jewish moment. Like, definitely Jewish mother. Like, she was like, Jesus, get up here and do that magic trick. Do that thing with the wine and the water. (laughs) Your father's bar mitzvah. It's amazing. Watch my son. He's amazing. He's savior of the world. So... Um, I think Mary was like the ultimate braggadocious mom for sure. (laughs) Well, that was fun. You're hilarious. You guys, I love connecting with our Graceology community so much. And I've got a really exciting schedule of spring events coming up and would love to meet you in person. So over the next few months, I'm going to be in Iowa, Arizona, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, West Virginia, and Louisiana. So if you're near any of these states, I want you to click the link in the show notes, or you can swing over to gwensmith.net and find my schedule page to learn more about these events. And I hope, hope, hope that I can meet you there. Now I want you to go ahead and formally introduce yourself, Carrie, to my Graceology oh. community, since you've kind of already given your hand out there. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, we're not listening to this episode. This one's weird. Uh, I guess you could say I live in Hollywood. I'm one of the four Christians out here. I'm <laughs> I'm a comedian. I'm a writer. I just started writing. Well, I've been writing for TV for a while, but now I'm officially a writer for the Hallmark Channel, so I'm very <laughs> honored for the past couple of years. And I love writing books and traveling all around the country. And um, I really would call myself an evangelist who does comedy mm. because I really think that's my highest calling is evangelism. And uh, the comedy is just how God chooses to use me. I love what I do. I'm a single mom of two fabulous tax write-off daughters, Lucy and Ruby, <laughs> and they're 12 and nine and they give me a lot of material. So yeah, it's really fun. That is exciting. I know that God has you all over the place and you do a lot of really fun women's events and you are so full of joy and come with such a fresh perspective on things like Peter walking on water. (laughs) You're never (laughs) going to forget that story. Like ever. (laughs) <laughs> With Jerome, we didn't know about him. My next book is about Jerome, the thirteenth disciple. <laughs> <laughs> But God did just have you write two books, which I'm like, who yeah. in the world comes out with two books at one time? But I do Girl. understand that they're complementary of one another. But Girl, <laughs> I laughed about that, too. But I was like, oh, you're going to give me money. OK, I'll write it. <laughs> well, your first one is called Confessions of a Proverbs 32 Woman. How I went from messed up to blessed up without changing a single thing. And your second one is the devotional companion to that. She rises late and her kids make her breakfast devotions for the proverbs 32 woman hilarious obviously there is no proverbs 32 so why don't you go ahead and speak to that for a second well years ago i read proverbs 31 woman in the bible which is a chapter that was recommended to me so i could be a better woman and a better christian and i told the lord i don't rise early and i don't plow and i wanted to be like her and it said she gathers her food from afar and i was like that's takeout jesus like let's be honest. So years ago in my comedy act, I started this movement called the Proverbs 32 Women. She rises late and her kids make her breakfast or she doesn't pay retail or I will submit to not going to work. And it caught on. But I love that your podcast is about grace because the whole reason I wrote these books is because I was sick and tired of mostly the Christian community telling me in subtle ways that I wasn't good enough because I didn't make farm to table crock pot meals and breakfast in the shape of a rainbow. And so (laughs) I was like, I'm not on Pinterest. It gives me a stomach ache. I shop at the dollar store. I buy the meat. My kids like bathe, you know, on Tuesdays if we're lucky. And just this sort of, I almost felt like a rebellion against this rejection that Mm -hmm. a lot of women deal with on a daily basis. And I know that the church community does not mean to do that, but you know, you know what it's like. I mean, you're up there. We see these speakers. They see me on stage. I look shiny and glittery. I'm like, that takes a village. You don't even know. <laughs> got that people. Takes to get me, I got people. I got a village <laughs> to get me dressed and shiny. But let's be honest, that's not real life. And I wanted there to be more books out there that took the Christian mask off and was like, you're, you are so good. 
just right where you are. Like God loves you. The books have scripture in them. They have discussion questions. Yeah. There's definitely information to help us in our journey, which was kind of comical because I was like, I don't know if I have anything to share, but I felt like my life lessons caused me to ponder with each chapter. Okay, what would God have me learn from this messed up? I mean, the hashtag for the books is hot mess for Jesus. <laughs> and um, it's really been a joy to be honest, to find these women out there that were like, I was just looking for somebody to validate me and tell me I'm okay. Yeah, we all need that. And we all need a good laugh. And that's one of the things I really appreciate you is that you said it earlier, we don't see life the same. We we are all so uniquely different, but you are wired for funny. So one of the things that is in your history, which is very different than most of us, is that you've been on The Tonight Show like a million times. How in the world did that happen? You know, I'm getting older. It's like Jay Leno. People are like, oh, back in the 1950s. I auditioned for Scott Atwell, who's a a Southerner, and I, I wrote a comedy sketch about two girls at a wedding trying to flirt with guys and uh, it was just kind of a comedy sketch that he saw and he cast me so I've I've done 29 episodes of the tonight show and I played everyone from Tanya Harding to the Bush daughters you know and I was doing it in the late 90s in the 2000s it was really a joy so if there would be like a Lorena Bobbitt story in the news we would go parody so it was almost like <laughs> Saturday Night Live with Jay Leno he was in the skits I I met John Travolta I mean If you're backstage at The Tonight Show, it is like Disneyland. You don't even know. And the hair and makeup guys would tell me who was coming in. And like one day I was in hair and makeup and I said to the guy who's sharing my dressing room, because it said mystery guest. Nope. And mystery (laughs) guest was coming and he's like, it's JFK Jr. Now, don't think I didn't want to hide in that closet, like just to kind of hang out. I didn't want to get arrested, but so it was a joy to work on that show. That is so cool. You obviously give a big contrast in your talks and in your books about the living the L.A. life and the how it kind of even widens the gap between reality and expectations and standards that society sets on people. Talk about that for a minute, because you're talking to, you know, my Graceology community. We consider ourselves the the average ordinary girl. We are living in our normal normal houses, doing our normal life thing. So how does that work in L.A.? I mean, it's hilarious. Like, I'm trying to buy a house right now in L.A. I'm a single mom and I'm buying a house. Now, when you buy a house in another state, you give them money. When you buy a house in L.A., you give them a kidney and you have to give them (laughs) plasma and you have to pay eight million dollars. It's so So ridiculous. But I love it here. Everything is probably a lot faster and more manic. I don't know because I'm in it, but I truly love my neighbors. I love my street. We have the most uh, idyllic street and neighborhood. We just can't look at our property taxes and not cry. So I can't imagine. But it's 73 degrees right now. Like, how do I complain (laughs) about that? You know what? I've been here 20 years. My kids are in a really spirit-filled Christian school. Mm. I've had amazing church experiences. I've had amazing experiences with God. And um, so people that think that there isn't a spirit-filled Christian life are completely wrong. I would venture to think that California Christians are even more spirit-filled because they're very real because it's Mm. not culture. So if they're in church, I mean, look, we even got Kanye West doing Sunday services now. I was this morning, I was like, I got to go get one of those, got to get to one of those. But so it's just, I think you can find authenticity wherever you are. Yeah. You just have to look for it. Totally. And and you, you tell some great stories about living in L.A. and, and, and the whole, you know, California girl kind of thing. Um, I, I did appreciate your um, your Groupon situation because I, I love me some Groupon. <laughs> um, talk about the jazz class because that I, was so yes, funny. I don't think- you should buy like a surgery on Groupon. Take it for me. <laughs> but um, I and I always promised myself that I wouldn't do old people jokes. But I am getting to a point in my life where I wake up and I hurt myself in my sleep. Like right. that's that's how old I am. <laughs> so sometimes we we quote women over 40 think in our mind that we should do something. So I decided to take jazz class because at 12, that was an amazing idea. So I uh, talk about Tiffany, my jazz class teacher who had to be 
all of, you know, 16 and my body, it's like that song. My body was saying, yeah, my mind was saying yes. And my body was saying no. So I got myself into some peculiar situations in this jazz class only to be rivaled by like a gynecologist appointment. Like my legs, are <laughs> splits. I can't get up. I don't want to be shown up by these little teeny boppers. And I just kind of came home and iced my thighs. And I ended up in, um, a jazzer size class, which I think is more my speed. I go to the senior center now. We have cookies. <laughs> I, it's just kind of like, but I think it's kind of funny that no matter what age, my mom, she's 77. And she's like, I still look in the mirror and I want, I feel like this 25 year old, like mentally. Yeah. And I think it's a lesson that we all have to deal with. Not that we have to not fight the good fight, but just that like, we don't have to do every single thing perfect and we don't have to be, I live in LA and I'm the chubby one and I'm a size like four and a half. Like I literally <laughs> have been asked, I'm not kidding. If you're pregnant like five times, like, and oh I'm not goodness. pregnant. So LA is a different culture. Yeah. There's not like friends that will bring you a casserole. They'll bring you like a pass to a gym and like, say, let's go to the treadmill and, and eat a salad. And I'm <laughs> looking for somebody with some potatoes and some cheese on top. Like that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> So it's a different culture. And I, I definitely, one of the chapters in the book, I wrote about Hollywood and how grieved I am at the movies and what's mm -hmm. happening and how I went to a movie and I, I literally left the theater crying and I was so upset. But then at the, at the same time, I was like, thank you, God, for not making me immune to what grieves you. And thank you, God, for letting me be upset. Because the minute we stop getting upset yeah, and that's everybody in the country and you know who you are and you're watching Big Little Lies and Game of Thrones and nobody's perfect. But the minute we stop getting upset about culture that, mm. that grieves the Lord is yeah. when we become the New Testament church and we become the lukewarm church in Revelation and we become party to the enemy's schemes. And I don't want to go to that place. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So why do you think that has become so acceptable in Christian culture now? I think it's the sign of the times. I mean, if you look back in the Bible days, they just went wild because the, the aristocracy, you know, King Solomon wrote about it. I'm not saying that it can't be turned around. Ironically, Hallmark Channel is the number one rated cable station and yeah. you can't even say the word jerk. But the problem is, is that Christians have access to all these inappropriate programming in their phones, on their TVs. They don't have to go to a movie and buy a ticket. They can stream Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. And they stream pornographic movies and nobody, quote, will know about it as opposed to 50 years ago. You had to go out and seek it, take responsibility for your actions, buy a ticket to that movie. And buy I buy the magazine that, at the at the, the yeah, gas yeah, station. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Like, secrecy is not our friend. That's right. Oh, girl, that is that's so true. And you know what? I know that some of you are listening and you're feeling some pangs of conviction now. And let me just say that's okay. <laughs> uh, because what Carrie's saying here is so huge. This is, it is so vital that we be women, you know, yeah, we, we kind of, you know, we joke and say confessions of a Proverbs 32 women, and it is funny, but the reality is that we serve a holy God, and we are really called to be set apart. And the, the set apartness is that, that sanctification process, we are justified in Christ, but we are sanctified on the daily by the laying down of of things that are lesser than. Hey friends, Gwen here. I want to talk to you about Bible study. Here's what I know for sure. Everything about your relationship with God will grow stronger when you're intentional to get to know Him more intimately by studying His Word. And the thing is, it doesn't take that long to open your Bible up every day and read. When you have a plan and a community to connect with, Bible study becomes more routine and faith becomes more authentic. But you've got to take the time to prioritize studying the Bible so that you can move forward growing in faith and experience the power, perspective, and peace that God provides and that we all want. Your relationship with the Lord grows stronger when you spend regular time in the Word. And I want to show you how to establish a simple and effective process for studying the Bible. I have a free online Bible study that'll show you exactly how to get started. I'm going to walk you through how to study the Bible using an inductive method that can be done in the comfort of your own home and in a time frame that fits with your personal schedule, even if you've never done a Bible study before in your life. Go to gwensmith.net slash psalmadventure. That's gwensmith.net slash psalmadventure to sign up for my free online Bible study. 
and I promise you'll walk away with a clear understanding of how to get started with a personal inductive Bible study plan. Don't wait. Everything about your relationship with God will grow stronger when you're intentional to know and trust Him more by studying the Bible. It's like we've been invited to this incredible, absolutely high-end, luscious, intense couture meal. But instead, we are totally feasting on bugles and yeah. and stuff ahead of the t- ahead of time so that when we, we sit down to the banquet table, we're like, oh, I'm not hungry. Just, you know, pass the water. And and that's wow. I mean, wow. I didn't even expect us to go there. But I know that there's people listening who must have needed to hear this as much I as mean, I wrote, we need to talk I, about it. Look, I'm so guilty. You know, when I'm the most guilty is on an airplane. When I'm on an airplane, I feel like there's something like I'm in the sky, so it doesn't count. Oh. It's so ridiculous because HBO is free. I don't have a <sighs> home and I wanted to watch Big Little Lies. And this was a thing that happened with my 11 year old. I was getting on her about a movie she was watching because they took the Lord's name in vain and it was like glorifying some stuff. It wasn't that bad, but it was I go, this grieves the Holy Spirit. And then she goes, really? Why don't we turn on Big Little Lies and Sneaky Pete, what you're watching, and see if that grieves the Holy Spirit right now? And wow. she, nailed me. like, she nailed me. And sometimes we can justify programming that's mm-hmm. a little bit debaucherous because you're like, oh, it's so artistic, and you know what I mean. Like, yeah. it's not an obvious choice. Like Fifty Shades of Grey, I get that one, right? But so I'm on an airplane and I decided I wasn't going to watch the second season of Big Little Lies. Well, it was on the quote edited version on the airplane and I watched it and it wasn't like terrible, but I got sucked into the story. Mm-hmm. It's not the greatest, not the worst. It's just like that discernment, that line that we walk. Everybody's got their own line, but you yeah. know, sin is sin. And I speak to you. Maybe you've never thought about this, but these are real people. These are real actors. So if you see them on TV and they're getting naked and they're forced into doing these roles, well, not forced, but they're doing these roles because that's what they think they have to be doing. You are supporting these young men and women doing these roles. Like Mm. you're supporting that that's what they feel they have to do with your money. So that's one other way to put it in perspective of why it can be harmful. Yeah, that's really powerful. And I always think that in the process of our faith lives, there is there is exactly that. There's a process. There's going to be some people, if you're new to the faith, it's it's there's the discovery of of what would grieve the Holy Spirit, what would please the heart of the Lord in terms of our choices and what would not. But as we mature in faith and we should that should be that is the heart of God for us is that we continue to walk toward his heart through his word his word reveals his will for our lives and the character and the holiness and the awesomeness of who he is and our lives should be in response to that so this is really this is a really important thing for us to talk about there's so many layers to the growth opportunities that we have in Christ and one of the growth opportunities that you talk a lot about in your book are those feelings of insecurity and inferiority and like you know back to the LA thing that comparison and feeling like you just don't measure up and we I mean good Goodness gracious, this is whether you live in the suburbs or in the city, on a farm or in some fabulous mansion, we all have to deal with this kind of stuff. And and you address this a lot. So talk to me about what God has been teaching you about those feelings of not being quite enough. You know, I know everybody talks about social media being the biggest culprit. I agree that social media can be so incredibly harmful to our self-esteem because you are having a bad day. Like me, I'm sitting in my car right now. I'm in my parachute pants and my sweatshirt. And I'm thinking about a friend of mine who's perfect. And I literally like walked out today and I go, oh, she would never wear this. Like she's Mm. so perfect. She's a celebrity. She just says, and then I was like, I'm sure she has bad days. Does it matter that I'm wearing my black workout pants and sipping a cherry diet Coke at 830 in the morning. And that's just what's happening for me today. I have to stop looking at these filtered images. And you know what I'm saying? Like we all do. 
it's harder and harder for the younger generations because they're they're not just filtering. I like to joke that these millennials are using Snapchat filters. And I'm like, really? Do you really want people to see you with bunny ears on so they don't recognize you unless you have a unicorn horn? That's not going to get well on a, on a blind date, you know? So we live a filtered life. I do it. You do it. We all do it. Yeah. But we have to put that in perspective and have real relationships. If I could give mm. anybody some advice is to find a real friend, a human yeah. friend with skin on and call them on the phone and use your voice mm. and get crazy and meet them in reality. Like Wednesday mornings, I have Bible study. I get busy. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to go. But when I go, I'm so blessed yeah. because there's real women to link arms with. All of our friends cannot be on the Internet. They have to be real and mm. it takes effort and you have to show up and you got to put yourself out there and you got to risk rejection, but it will pay off in the end. Totally, totally. And I think that, well, friendships and community and sisterhood, this this helps us to come alongside of one another, to to loop our arms through each other, to be there. I mean, the Bible talks about in Ecclesiastes that two is good, but three is better because, you know, they're going to pick each other up. You know, one is good, but two is better. Um, help each other up. And and we need each other. This is this is huge. And the screen life versus the skin to skin life. It's huge. It's I really appreciate that. So what does that balance between work life and mom like look for you? I delegate quite well. Like, I guess I'm just not afraid to say no. I'm not afraid to say, you know, I'm a Girl Scouts. I mean, Girl Scouts, right? It's a female gang. If you haven't heard of it, kids <laughs> or they kill your family. But I can't go to the camping trip. Sometimes I'm working. Yeah. So I don't feel too terribly bad about it. I think stop feeling guilty. You can't do everything. You can't be every room mom, PTA president. I can't go to the field trip. So I'm like, and you know what? I, I was crazy. I didn't do the nut sale this fall. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't have time to sell nuts because I was raising money for my daughter's jogathon. So I think <laughs> it's a matter of getting your boundaries and not feeling bad about it. I don't feel bad that we didn't sell nuts. I'm like, <laughs> it's okay. You know what I'm saying? So I think that if you can give yourself the gift of saying no, yeah, it really can help you focus in on what you want to say yes to. And what I want to say yes to is watching Hallmark movies with my kids on the weekend. What mm. I want to say yes to is I have a delightful roommate. And once in a while, I don't feel guilty that we sneak out and go see a movie. You mm. know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's yes to those things that make me a better mom. And yeah. a bad person, if you're listening and you're not a mom, this isn't just about parenting. It's just like saying yes to some things that you might get a lie from the devil to, oh, don't go get that manicure. Don't get a massage. That's a luxury. Well, maybe it's not for you. And maybe you need to go do that and be OK with it. Yeah. The one thing that you say, the big takeaway of Confessions of a Proverbs 32 woman is that there's two things that you can hold on to, as you say, longer than a smartphone, which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> genuine genuine self-awareness and humble God awareness. What has God been teaching you about living on the daily in an awareness to him? I think when I was writing this book, the humble God awareness is his innate sense of humor because mm -hmm. When I wanted to get Botox and then I decided I would try it like all my L.A. friends and don't pretend you don't do it in North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> and then I broke out in hives oh, no. <laughs> like, and I'm sitting in my car and I was like, I'm sorry, God. And God's like, I got you, girl. It's all good. You're going to look great tomorrow. But mm. it's just God awareness that he is for me, not against me. And he thinks I'm funny and he thinks you're funny. And you're listening to this podcast right now and you're like, you know, I'm driving carpool in my pajamas. I have one shoe on. Like whatever your life looks like, I'm, I'm late to work and I'm chugging down cappuccinos because I got to stay awake. He is for you, not against you. And that's the God awareness that I hope everybody takes away from this podcast and my books. He is for you and so enamored by you. And he thinks you're adorable <sighs> and he's yeah. excited for you when you get those little, you know, Jamaican meat patties at the dollar store on sale two for a dollar. He's like, yes, girl, I support you. So stop feeling like he's in heaven looking down and telling you that you're doing everything wrong. And just try to remember that he sent his son for you. And he mm. wouldn't have done that if he wasn't completely in love with you. 
Yeah. And w- even as you're saying that, um, I'm just kind of giggling to myself, but I'm thinking, and he's a God of grace. I mean, oh, yes. You know, we, we think of the messes we've made of our lives and maybe some of the choices that have not been good. But Jesus gives us such a beautiful picture of who God is and the way he responds when our hearts want to come to him and make things right. And when we're, when we're willing to, to come before him and say, I messed up and I really need you in this and, moment. We see that had, picture. Yeah. I had that yesterday. So I'm trying to buy a house. Things are crazy. I would like to tell you that I wake up and I have my quote quiet time and I listen to the word. And that's nice because sure, most days I do. But I had so much to do yesterday mm. and I started doing projects and I was on my phone. I wasn't even leaving my house. And I kept saying, you know, the first thing I should do is listen to my audio Bible and pray. I know this. Mm. Well, girl, I thought that all day long and it didn't, and it was two o'clock oh, and my yeah. kids were coming home from school and I had to get the little one to the doctor. And then she had to go to gymnastics class and I hadn't gone to the post office and I did everything first, yep. everything. And then when I got to pray to him, I was filled with guilt. I was filled with guilt and shame. And I said, God, I don't even feel worthy to apologize to you because you know that I did this on purpose. Like, and if my kid came to me with that kind of a conviction, I would wrap my arms around them and I'd be like, I love you so much, my daughter, because you have the awareness to say, I'm going to try it again. Like you didn't just skip it all together. And even if you did, God would still wrap you in his arms. But it's that thing that I don't care, even Beth Moore and all these holy people that we look up to, whoever (laughs) they are, have these days where they are so far off kilter. And we need to stop comparing ourselves and just be like, God, I am so sorry. And first of all, let me just address the women that are listening. And they have much bigger things to deal with. And they've got much bigger issues. And you're you're post-abortive or you're going through a, you know, a terrible season of sin in your life, or you've Mm -hmm. got an addiction and nobody knows, like they are the same to our father, God, like they are all, they're all wiped away and he wants to walk you through those things, but you have to be willing to come to him. Mm -hmm. And there's no like late in the game to come to God. There's no late in the game to say, Lord, I want to try again. Yep, I'm living proof that no matter how broken life seems, Jesus restores and redeems. It is who he is, it is what he does. And that picture that we see of God the Father that Jesus told in the prodigal son is that when the prodigal came to his senses, he returned to the Father. And and it doesn't say that that the Father had his hands on his hips and a finger wagging saying, you're going to spend the rest of your life paying this off. It says he ran to him. He put his arms around him and then he threw a party because he was so stoked that his son had come home whom he loved so much and I don't know where this finds you on the other end of, of, of this podcast but I just know that God's message for you is love and grace but it does require your responsiveness in that moment to him that humble confession but the Bible comes with a promise that the word of God tells us that if we confess our sin that God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and he meets us with love And I appreciate you because I know this about you, that you're not afraid to take that mask off. I know that when I met you and I'm sure you've dealt with this, you know, you're this beautiful woman on the outside before I ever met you. And it looks like you have it all together. But from what I know about you and followed you on social media is that you're not afraid to be like, this is where I was and where I am today, because the worst thing that we can do as leaders is to have a persona that we don't know what it's like. Yeah, to totally. Ground. And you've literally been on that. Like, I know your story. So yeah, it's very refreshing to have somebody like you that's not that's willing to go, look, this is this is smoke and mirrors sometimes. And let me tell you where I was, because that yeah. would make me want to go. I can do this, too. Exactly. And you, you know what you just said? The key word I heard you say was willing. And um, the last chapter of my book, Broken into Beautiful, it's the question is got beauty is the title is of that chapter. And it's really about we are all called once, you know, once we've gone to him and, and, and offered our hearts and our lives to the Lord for him to clean up, to make right, to, yeah. to mend that then there is the responsibility not for us to run around the world telling everybody everything everything we did sure, but sure. with the but the key word is willingness it is it is when the spirit of god prompts you to share about something that 
was hard in your life, something that was a major gaffe, a major horrific mistake, horrible choices, maybe a season of bad choices. It's about the willingness. Are you willing? If the Lord prompts you to share that with someone for their benefit, for his glory, are you willing? And so that's, for me, been the key to what I share and when I share. But one thing that God made very clear to me as I stepped into public ministry spaces that it was going to be a continuum of laying down and willingness to be transparent. So I appreciate you saying that. But girl, yeah, I always tell people I was in Pennsylvania this past weekend speaking at a conference and I just shared uh, when I shared my testimony, I just said, listen, when I'm up here, I I love much because I've been forgiven much and I stand only on a platform of grace, not on perfection. Yes. And we need more of that. So you got to keep doing what you're doing. Oh, thanks, girl. You do, too, because we need more laughter. I agree. (laughs) <laughs> so you have this fun, fun book, Confessions of a Proverbs 32 Woman, which is going to encourage people, but it's always, it's also going to make you laugh. It's just, you're such a crazy, hilarious storyteller. And I just, I delight in that. I really do. I love to laugh. It's one of my things <laughs> for sure. But I love the devotional. She rises late and her children make her breakfast. I, I just, I want that like on wall art. It's so fun. Um, <laughs> it's a 60 day devotional. So let me, let let me just kind of unpack this for my crew, for my Graceology people, because this is this is cool. This is actually what I was thinking, Carrie, is that this is like a perfect gift for a girlfriend who kind of thinks she might like Jesus, but she doesn't really yeah. know him yet. Listen, where are you going to get a boat? Like there's Botox, there's 80s rap lyrics, there's Golden Girls theme songs, <laughs> and there's Rocky Balboa, like all in one, <laughs> all in one devotional. I, do you know how long it took me to find a publisher that was going to let me write like that? <laughs> so well, if, I think it's definitely cool for somebody who's never read a devotional. I'm giving it out to people that aren't even religious. I love it. And I, I just say, here's a book of stories, you know, read some stories. And they're about two pages long because that's all we have in the bathroom. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But each each of the 60 days of devotions here, I'm going to just spell it out for my Graceology chicks. Um, each of them has this starts off with a verse. There's always a biblical truth, even though the stories are hilarious. She will bring that back um, to the Lord. But then and then there's the devotion component, the stories that Carrie tells. And you can obviously tell she can tell a story. And but then she gives you a couple things to, to think on. So that's the reflection, the response section at the end. And and then she leads you in prayer. So it's what you would expect from a devotional, but with humor. And so I personally think this is just terrific. There's such a spectrum of options when it comes to devotions. This is a really fun one. This would be great for people who loves to laugh. I love to laugh. It's so sweet. You draw a lot from your experiences in motherhood and, you know, often like that. So what can women without children take away from the devotional? Right. And I made sure 150 percent this was not a motherhood, even though the title, I know it's a little bit misleading. I have a roommate. Her name's Debbie and she's single, no kids, and she's awesome. And so every devotion I wrote had to go through her. And I would say maybe 20 to 30 percent mention my crazy kids, like when they ate a whole bottle of Flintstone vitamins. And I'm like, I can't (laughs) cope with control because they know me. But um, I struggle with loneliness. Um, I'm a single mom. I think there was a lot of chapters that have nothing to do with parenting, but just common themes, uh, whether it be self-worth or, you know, like I said, all of those, all of those things. But I intentionally did not make this a mom book. I already have a mom book from yeah. previous. So I guess my last question before we wrap up is, is so knowing my Graceology community and they send me emails and direct messages and I get to meet them when I'm out speaking at events and stuff. I do know that as much as we love to laugh, there are some really hard things in our lives and painful challenges. And and sometimes the struggles can be so suffocating. How has God taught you to learn to allow laughter in those times? Or what what does that look like? My father almost died last year. And I wrote about it in the devotional because he's been sick for seven years. And it was a terrible, terrible seven year journey of sickness and undiagnosed problems. And I went to visit him a year ago in Georgia and he was down to 137 pounds. He's 5'11". And just belligerent. Like he was dehydrated, malnourished, 
And he was telling us that he wanted to move out and leave my mother and get his own apartment. Like he was so out of his mind. They've been married Mm. 51 years. He's 80. And I have never said like a swear word in front of my mother. I've never like, you know, I'm very Southern. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just looked at my dad. I was like, you better shut the hell up now. Okay. I don't use those words. I don't use hell. I couldn't handle it. Cause he, and we all just burst out laughing. Like my dad burst out laughing. My mom burst out laughing. That's the first swear word I've ever said in front of them. And we just laughed because this was like kind of warfare, like laughing at the devil being like, Mm. you're not going to win this one. Even if my dad dies and he goes to heaven because I kissed him goodbye the next day. And he almost died, like physically almost died. I knew that I was like, I'm not going to let the devil win. And sometimes we have these ridiculous moments of like, you know, the good news is that in my gracious, gracious savior, he chose to heal my father. And my Mm -hmm. father is completely healed 100 percent. Wow. But in those moments when your father is like yelling and trying to get the car keys, running out of the house because he's like dementia. You just have to laugh. And so, you know, there's caregivers out there right now listening. You know, you're caring for a loved one and it's so hard. She cared for him for seven years, like bedridden. You got to laugh. You got to laugh because laughing is warfare. Mm -hmm. And laughing is like, you don't win, devil. You don't win. So you got to laugh because laughter is healing and laughter is warfare, in my opinion. Yeah, it really is. And I I just encourage all of us to really take a deep breath and make sure that we have balance in our lives. And that when we have seasons of strain, that we also have moments of release and laughter and, and lighthearted fun, because it's so important. There was a little parody to if you're happy and you know it, if, if you're happy and you know it, tell your face. OK, you know, that should never be the song that a Christian has to sing. Because we do have hope. So it's been so fun to talk with you, Carrie. I would love if you would just take a moment, just considering the spectrum of of topics we've covered today, just pray over my Graceology community. Sure. Would you do that I, for me? I would be honored. And Lord, awesome. I just pray for every woman. I know women in my world right now that have eight-year-old daughters that are going through cancer treatments. I know women in my world that are going through divorce and heartache and sickness and pain. So I can imagine you out there listening right now. And I just pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you lift the burdens of grief, that you lift the burdens of sickness, that you lift the burdens of despair, that you are an all-knowing supernatural God, that you literally bring people back from death. You did it in the Bible. You did it with my father. There's nothing too big for you. The word incurable is not in your vocabulary. So I just pray that you touch them as they're driving, as they're walking, as they're listening in a super natural way Hmm. in a supernatural way that is unexplainable that is unexplainable and that they feel your presence because we need supernatural God we need the big breakthroughs we need the big miracles because we love you and we trust you and we're putting these big situations in your capable hands Hmm. so we trust you with the outcome and I thank you for peace peace beyond understanding in Jesus name amen amen The two books are Confessions of a Proverbs 32 Woman and She Rises Late and Her Kids Make Her Breakfast. (laughs) My guest today has been Carrie Pomeroli. Carrie, would you tell my community before we go the best one place online to find you? If you just remember the words Proverbs 32 and you put that in Google, all of my everything about me will come up. I mean, you can remember the words Proverbs 32 woman.com. Perfect. And I'll have links to all of that and more on the show notes. So, Carrie, it's been so awesome having you on the Graceology show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. Be sure to visit Carrie online and connect with her on social media. Today's show was edited by Chad Chooping, and the music is by premiumbeat.com. Hey, if your church hosts women's events, or if you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, y'all, you know I love hearing from you. Send me a message or a speaking inquiry right from my website at gwensmith.net. All of the links and the show notes from today's episode with Carrie can be found at gwensmith.net slash graceology. That's gwensmith.net slash graceology. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, if you haven't already subscribed, I want you to open up your podcast app and click that subscribe button. Here's why. Subscriptions and reviews on podcast apps like iTunes or whatever app you listen on, they make a huge difference for those of us who are working hard to bring you these shows. Hey, and be sure to connect with me on social media. I'm at Gwen Smith Music on every platform. And I absolutely love Instagram. And the show is at Graceology with an IE on every platform as well. Now get out there and have a beautiful, grace-filled day.